So in the last video, we talked about the momentum operator working on this plane wave function psi to give out the momentum as its eigenvalue. We also concluded, or we also concluded or coded some really nice de Broglie's equations, which is the momentum is h bar times k. And with the help of Einstein, we also said that energy is h bar times omega. And with these, we also said that the partial of psi with respect to x gives me i p over h bar times psi. And if I multiply this partial of psi with respect to x with negative i h bar, I get what I desire. I get momentum times the same function psi. So this is an operator. I can say this is a momentum operator, p cap which will give me negative i h bar times partial of x. So when I add any function here, what I get is the momentum of that function and that same function psi. So momentum is the eigenvalue here. So now let's get further and let's try to calculate the energy of this wave function. Classically, since we're talking about matter waves here, you should know that the energy is actually p square over 2m. So what I'm looking for is a p square term. I'm looking for a p square term anyways, um, by any means possible. So let's see how I can get the, um, with taking the displacement or the x or the position into consideration. So if I, I already have a p term here with dou psi over dou x or del psi over del x, that's the same thing, but I like to call it dou. So dou psi over dou x gives me like a, a momentum parameter, but I want p square. So now I'm going to be a little intelligent here and I'm going to de de derive it again. I'm going to partially differentiate psi again with respect to x. So I'm taking the second order differential with respect to x for psi. Um, so dou square psi over dou x square will give me, I already have ip over h bar times, now this will get differentiated again. So del psi over del x. So now del psi over del x, I already know what this is. So ip over h bar will get multiplied again with ip over h bar itself. So this will become ip over h bar times ip over h bar times the wave function psi. Um, okay. So now let's just let's just get the dust um, dust out. Do square psi over do x square. I and I will get negative one, so I will get negative p square. I get a p square term, so I'm happy now. Negative p square, but I also have an h square term here. H bar square term times psi. I want to get rid of this negative sign, and I want to get rid of one over h square term here, and I also want to add mass here. So what if I add both these sides by 1 over 2m and I also multiply both these sides, um, okay, or if, what if I multiply both these sides by 1 over 2m, I think I said add before, and what if I multiply both the sides by x square such that I will get rid of this x square function and also multiply both sides by negative 1. Let me show you. So what if I say um, I do 1 negative, negative x square. over 2m times dou square psi over dou x square. What this will give me, let me write it down here. So negative h bar square over 2m partial of psi on second order with respect to x. Negative, negative h, h square and h square will get canceled here. And I also will get like 1 over 2m term in this time. So what I get is again what I desired. So p square over 2m times psi. Or I can also write it as the energy of the wave times psi, classically. So this is one of the important conclusions again. This is one of the way of calculating the energy operator. There's also one more way where we include the partial with respect to time. But this, you should also remember that if I do h square over 2m, negative h square over 2m, times the second order in position, second order in position of the psi, then what I get is that the energy of that wave function times psi. So here, energy is my eigenvalue. Okay, perfect. So now I just wrote down what we just derived. Negative h, h bar squared over 2m times the second order differentiation of psi with respect to x gives me the energy of the wave function psi times that wave function psi, which is depending on position and time again.
So this is very important again, because this is an operator, negative h squared over 2m times del squared over del x squared. And if I operate this operator with the wave function psi, this will give me the energy of that function as its eigenvalue, as you know the, um, the concept of eigenvalues. So now, but I also need to do one more thing. Well, I need to bring in the time dependency. So now let's try to um, let's try to um, let's try to derive the energy with respect to um, with respect to time. So let's derive um, let's uh, partially differentiate psi with time now. del psi over del t or dou psi over dou t. So um, downstairs, I get negative i times omega. So negative i times omega, since some um, time is present here. And then I get the same wave function psi. So I'll just write psi, big fat psi. OK, um, let's not underline this thing yet. So now, OK, what I get is an omega term. But I, what I want is energy. And I can just um, play with this equation as much as I want to get whatever I want. Energy is, um, is actually governed by this equation here. So I can say omega is E over H bar. So remember, negative I times E over H bar. So I can say negative I times E over H bar times psi is actually dou psi over dou t. But I just want energy. I don't want the h bar or i term here as its eigenvalue of this operator. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to again multiply both the functions such that I only get energy. So trivial, very trivial. I can say i h bar times del psi over del t is equal to, now I get just energy. E times the wave function psi. And this conclusion is actually very important because this is the first order in time equation of the wave function psi. And if I multiply that wave function with some h bar, which is some number, a constant number, a real number, and if I rotate that function i, that is 90 degrees in the other side, well, and if I just, um, if I just do that operation on this wave function psi, what I get as its eigenvalue is the energy times psi. So this is also one of the important conclusions. So let's write it down here. I have the momentum and I have the energy operations here. So I, H bar, momentum in green and energy in blue. I H bar times del psi over del T will give me the energy of psi. Okay, so now there are the two methods I have derived the energy or the energy um, operator of the wave function psi. So now in the next video, we'll be talking about the Schrodinger's equation, some of its important applications, and the potential term V, which will eventually help us in understanding the function or understanding the um, value of the Hamiltonian here, understanding the significance of Hamiltonian in here. So that was it for today's video. I have talked about the energy operator here. And how we can get the how we can derive the energy operator by some psi, which is like a plane wave function. Psi isn't usually like this, but it's a superposition of many wave functions. But that is some advanced level quantum mechanics. So let's talk about that later. But for now, I have known that if I just partially differentiate psi second order in space and multiply it by negative h squared over 2m, I get the energy as its eigenvalue. But also if I first order partially differentiate psi with respect to time and multiply it with i times h bar, I still get energy times psi. That was it for this video. Thank you for watching.